Hi, welcome to Kate's Paper Creations. This is Kate, and I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Washington State. I am here to share with you a weekly video showing products from Stampin' Up! These particular products today, some of what I'm going to be showing you, are discontinued because they have come from the current the Stampin' Up! Celebration catalog, which just ended um, the 28th of February. And so these products that are you see on this particular card today are not available at this time. Um, but I'm using some of my older products up, and you can most easily change this up to current designer papers and stuff, okay? So I am doing what's called a, a twist and pop card. They're really popular out there right now. I've watched many videos on how to make them from various people, but the one I found to be the easiest was by a gal that has a YouTube channel and she's called May May, M-A-Y, M-A-Y, Made It Crafts. May May Made It Crafts. And her technique is the one I'm going to show you today because I felt it was the easiest to do. And this is what it looks like. This is an unfinished card on the front, but you will see what I'm talking about. This is what it does. It pops open. Now it does create some bulk and a card made like this is probably going to need extra postage when you mail it, just so you're aware of it. But that's how it works. Isn't that just fun? Just totally fun. And I was using the Berry Blossoms stamp set and papers from the Celebration 2021 catalog. So that's what I'm using for my sample. And like I say, you can substitute very easily. So let me show you how she did it. Started with, I'm starting with a piece of basic white regular cardstock. I would not recommend using the thick cardstock for making the mechanism part of this card because it would get very thick and bulky and would not function as well. So I would stick with the lighter weight basic white. It's a standard eight and a half by 11 inch piece, but we want it to be eight and a half by 10 and three quarters. So I am going to take a quarter of an inch off of the one end, just like that. Then we are going to do some scoring and I'm going to start with the short side and we are going to score at two and a quarter. And your paper trimmers are perfect for this because it's got the, the scoring blade already in here so two and a quarter I will recommend that you not press very hard if you press too hard with your scoring tool in the trimmer you will just tear this basic white and you don't want to do that it does not need to be pressed super hard go light and go over it twice rather than pressing too hard the next cut is at four and a quarter or cut I should say score mark is at four and a quarter and again just lightly a couple times and then the last one is at six and a quarter. So I'll pull this out so I can see that mark. And six and a quarter. And like that. Then I'm going to turn it to the long side and I'm going to score at three and seven eighths. Five and three eighths which is just short of the half inch mark there. And six and seven eighths. Now you probably can't see these score lines in the video, but it looks like a little bit of a checkerboard in there. And we are going to cut out the four large corners, the one, two, three, and four. We're going to cut those out. Now you can do that with scissors, totally easy, but I do want you to know you can also do this on your trimmer. And the way I can, you can do it is on the trimmer, the cutting blade in the center has a little tiny score mark on the blade there. And that tells you where the center of that blade is at. And you can line that up as you're cutting. So I'm starting out with this um, on the short side and I am lining up my score mark with the cutting groove on my trimmer. And then I am going to close this down and I'm going to line up that center line. When I come down, I'm going to cut 
and cut down to where my center line on the blade lines up with my score mark here because that's where I want to stop. So I'm going to pull it down and just bring it to right where it matches and then I'm going to stop there. Then I'm going to lift it up, bring the blade down to the bottom and I'll push this up so I can keep it in the screen for you. And again, I'm going to just make sure that my score line is lined up with the groove, with the cutting groove. And I am going to cut and make sure that the center line on my blade lines up with the score mark. Now I'm going to turn it around and do the same thing on the other side. We're going to line it up. I'll stay with the bottom one here and I'm going to cut up to that point and stop. Then I'm going to lift it up and go back to the top. We'll bring this back down so you can see. I'm going to make sure my score line and my groove are lined up and they are. And I'm going to again cut down and stop when I get to where that lines up with my score marks. Okay, so you can see that I have cut those four spots. Now I'm going to turn it and we're going to cut out those others. So again, lining up the groove with the score line, with the groove in the cutter, and coming down and lining up like that, and there's the piece. Now I will lift it up, pull it down to the bottom, and this time I'm going to double check, yep, all lined up, and cut up until I line it up. When I get there, I just kind of slow down so I can get it lined up perfect. And there's that one. And then you can turn it around or turn it over, it doesn't matter which, and line up that line with the groove in your cutter, in your trimmer, and here we go. And like I say, if you don't have one of these, you can certainly do this with scissors. But I just kind of like to show you how versatile your trimmer can be. Okay, and down we come. And there it is. Okay, let me get that out of the way. Because the next thing we're going to do is we want to create a triangle in the, it, that crosses over right in the very center of this piece. And the way you can do that is there's a groove mark here, a score mark in the center of each of these side pieces. And you're going to, uh, you could use a ruler or your bone folder or something like that and put it right on that center X and fold against that. And you wanna bring it so that this score line and the score line that's on here line up with each other. Just like that. And it lines up down here, and then we're going to press this, and we're going to give it a good burnishing so it will stay in place. And when you open it up, that score line you just made should cross right over the center of that T mark that's in the middle, and it does for us. So I'm going to score it one more time. Then I want to do that with the other side. So now I'm going to bring this one around like this. I'm going to put my bone folder right on the tip of that in the center of that thing and then I'm going to bring it around I'm lining up these score marks and then pressing it into place and burnishing it very well and they all cross in the middle just like they're supposed to I love it when it comes together like it's supposed to <laughs> okay now I'm going to just do some folding on all those other score marks. At least give it one fold on all of them. So it'll make it a little bit easier for me to get it to fold like it's supposed to. And let's see if I can remember how to do this. This is going to... I'm looking at my sample so I don't mislead you. <laughs> Yeah, okay. These these folds, I had to think for a minute. <laughs> it's my prerogative. Um, you're going to fold these ones back like this. 
and just bring it down like that. Can you see that? Just pick it up, bring them together like this, and they're gonna meet in the middle on that score line that you have going up and down. And then this piece, then just lay these down so that it ends up looking like this. And I'm going to line up all my edges here, and then I'm going to press in this direction. Let me see if this will help. Just like that, and I'm holding that very securely, and then I'm bringing myself up here and folding those, and I am going to bring in my score, my burnishing tool, whether it's a bone folder or a pencil or whatever you use, and make sure those all line up. So that's what it's gonna look like. Okay, let me open and close that a little bit slower. That is one of the things I had a problem with is some of the people were making them so quickly that I couldn't really follow how the fold was going. So here it is. We have made that X, remember? Because we came around like this and lined up those score marks. And then we came around like this and again lined up the score marks. And now we're going to just bring it in. It's almost like folding a kimono if you think if you think about it. So they're going to come in like that and come down and match in the center. And then the top one just ends up matching in the center. Make sure your edges are lined up and then burnish your fold really, really well. And I would turn it over and burnish both sides really, really well. Now, there's score marks showing. Don't fret about that. They are going to get covered up and they are not going to show. None of this, none of this is going to show when you get done with your card. Okay, so that is the basic mechanism part of the twist and pop card. Okay, now we'll move on to the next piece. Okay, the next piece is going to be cut three width wide by 11. And I'm using real red for this particular project. And you're going to be scoring it on the long side at two and three quarters. Two and three quarters, five and a half, and eight and a quarter. I gotta pull out my side piece again here. And eight and a quarter. And that creates four equal portions across the piece. And then you're going to fold them and just accordion fold. Okay, I'll show you again. So it kind of looks like an M when you stand it up like that, or a W, depending on which way you want to go. <laughs> but that's what it's going to look like, okay? So you're folding valley, mountain, valley, okay? Now, that piece, <coughs> excuse me, is going to attach to this piece. And the way that's going to work, see, this is going to go into your card just like this. Okay, and so this is going to get attached to this. And what you're going to do is take, <clears throat> excuse me, the score lines, and you're going to line up those score lines with the ones that are in your white piece and match it at the top. There's a line here and a line here, and you're matching it to the top and matching the middle score line, just like that. Okay? And then we start gluing. And you do want to use glue. You do not want to use tape adhesive. When there is tension on a project like this, that taped adhesive will not hold for any length of time and it's very possible your card will come apart if you don't use actual glue. So what kind of glue you use is up to you, but I highly recommend you use glue. So you line up those center pieces and this with the fold there, and then fold this back, and it reveals this here. And there's a 
score mark right here. And you're going to glue just this top section right here. Nothing else. Don't go below that fold that score mark. Keep your glue right in this section. And press that down. And then on the other side, you're going to fold it in. And this time you're going to put the glue in the bottom section, opposite. And press it down. We'll let that sit for a minute. It needs to dry for a little bit. We don't want to start messing with it too soon. So we'll let that dry for a minute. And we'll get out what we're going to cut the base card from. And again, I'm just going to use real red. And it's going to be a standard A2 base card. So it's going to be cut at five and a, at four and a quarter by 11. So it's four and a quarter wide by 11 long. And then it's going to get scored at five and a half. Oops, get my blade out of the way. At five and a half. And that's going to make a top fold A2 greeting card. So there's your base card. Okay. Now let's go back to this. It looks like it's dry. And so now we are going to close, find my center mark, I'm going to close this and when we do, it's going to make it do this. So, just like this. Could you see that? Let me let me do it again. So it's actually going to end up making these sections fold. You can see them. They're going to fold like this. Okay. And it's going to come down and make that triangular shape again. Except you're just going to have your red on the inside of it. Okay. And this edge showing, that's okay. It's going to match up with the rest of the card. When the card is done... It looks like it's too long because it goes past the end of your white, but you're going to have that border, okay? And when this closes, it ends up lining up perfectly with the bottom edge of your card right there. So it's perfect. It's okay for it to have this little bit of an edge here, okay? So there's how the card mechanism works, just like that. Now we're going to put it inside the card. And the way you're going to do that is you do want that white to have its little eighth inch border all the way around. And so you're going to place it in there so it has that. And you're going to make sure that this tip is just barely below the center fold. And you can close it once just to make sure it's going to close appropriately. Okay? So you can do that. And it looks like mine's going to work that just fine. Make sure my edges are lined up. Okay. And so I get it in here again and I will line up those edges. That's my eighth inch border all the way around. And then I am going to put glue. Again, I'm going to use glue on this whole piece. And then I'm going to close this on here and hold it in place. Let it set for just a minute and start to get stuck pretty good. Then I'm going to just very carefully tip it over, flip it over. And I'm going to do the same thing with this side. Now I haven't put any decorative paper on. That's okay. I'm going to show you how to do that. i get some in the middle. <laughs> in just a minute. And we're going to press that down. We're going to hold it in place. And let it set for just a minute. Now, the pieces that are going to go on here, the panels, I use just plain Whisper White. And they are cut two and three quarters by two and a half. 
And so you just cut some of those and those are going to attach to each of the panels. So let's do that. Two and three quarters by two and a half. There's two and three quarters. While we're letting that dry, this gives us something to be doing. By two and a half. One. Two. Three. Oh, there's my clock. <laughs> you ever know when that thing's going to go off? But it's time for it to go off. Okay. So you've got four of those. Again, two and three quarters by two and a half. And when you decorate them, they're going to be sitting in this orientation, taller and narrower. Okay? So those are going to be going onto the panels of this piece. And you can decorate them before you put them on. That would probably be your better option and then you can just attach them flat and it will leave this eighth inch border all the way around just like you see in my card just like you see here then to do this designer series paper on the inside let's show you how we did that i'm going to use something different whatever i've got over here and i think i'm going to just use this pretty plaid from that very paper the designer series paper and we want this to have an eighth of an inch border of the, on the white okay and this white has already been cut to four inches wide so this needs to be three and three quarters inches wide make sure i'm getting my measurement up here just to make sure yeah three and three quarters by five so we're going to do three and three quarters. Get that out of the way. And then we're going to need two pieces because I'm going to put one in the top and the bottom. But of course, now this is going to be your preference. You may not want to put the same thing in both places like I did here. And when you're using something that has a specific orientation, you want to watch for that. But you're going to cut two pieces, three and three quarters by five. Piece to save for later okay now you're going to want to put this up in here so that it has this you could you could just line it up and you could just cut it right here you could just cut it here and it wouldn't have to go up inside at all and that might be easier for you. Um, let's see what that would measure. That would be if you cut it three and, well, three and a half, three and three quarters, excuse me, would probably work. But another thing you can do is you can, um, Take your piece before you attach it inside your card. You could take your piece like this that's all folded and ready to be used. And you can lay it on here so that you've got that eighth inch border. And you would have to do this before you attach it to the card, obviously. And then you would turn it over and mark that. And cut those off. And save these little triangles because I used them on the inside of my card as well. So, and then you can do the same thing. You can just take this and use this as your pattern to cut the other side if you're going to do both the top and the bottom. And I'll show you that put together in a minute. gets to be a little bit of a long video and I'm sorry for that but it just takes a little time to, to show you how all the pieces come together 
Then I'm just going to put regular flat adhesive on this all the way around. And because I don't have to worry about orientation, I can just go ahead and put this in here. And I'm just going to slide it in here until I have my 3 8 inch border. Just like that. So there's how it looks. Then I'm going to do the other side the same way. And you can add, I mean there's so many things you can add to this design to this fold. It's just really, really awesome what you can do with it. Okay, and then this one, just like that. And there is that. And then you can choose another one. So that's what I did here. And you can kind of see it in there, I think. And again, then I added a piece to the front and I'm getting ready to do some more with it. And I'll be showing you that in just a moment. So there you go. There's your fold. There's your card, ready to go, ready to finish. To put whatever you want on the front, to put whatever you want on your panels, and then it folds up. And like I say, it is a little bit of a bulky card, so you would want to be um, careful to um, add extra postage when you send it in the mail, okay? Um, I hope you've enjoyed today's card. The, thumb, the thumbnail that goes with this on the video should show you what I've finished on the front. But I just wanted to show you this technique today. And any stamp set would work. You, you just get creative with the various stamp sets that you have. And this is also for my um, people that stay at home and don't come to workshops. This helps them um, understand how to make this particular card. So I hope you had fun today. Whoops. Cooperate. There we go. Hope you had fun today and I'm glad you stopped by.